In this video, we're going to talk about the higher self. On this journey for creating success in the realm of entrepreneurship and other areas related to traditional success, I was able to discover a very interesting concept. Much of the desires and how to bring forth the desires are already available to us via something called the higher self. So what we see on my screen right here is the Robert Diltz logical levels of change. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this before, but let's go over this because I believe it's important to realize that when you are aligned with your higher self or you are on the journey of aligning to your higher self, all these things that are related to the Robert Diltz model tend to flow into existence. In other words, you're able to bring forth what you desire with a greater sense of joy, bliss, and ease not from a place of force. So we've got vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environment. The identity is the area that we are interested in. This is the part where we refer to as the self. This identity is formed through experiences in life, and it is to be believed to be who we are until we evolve to a higher degree of understanding our consciousness and realize that this identity is not who we are. It is something that we can change and we can evolve and assume another identity to bring forth certain values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environmental changes that are a reflection of that identity, or otherwise known as the self-image. Now, we can go through life and switch identities around, and we can get to a point where we might feel What's the point of this? Why do we want to assume an identity for what reason? Why does it matter? Well, it is usually along those points in your journey where you start to understand the concept of higher self, your true identity. When we go through life, we have many hunches, inspirations, omens, signs, synchronicities that reveal to us the purpose and pathway in life. A good book to read to really understand this concept at a deep level is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Many of us right now have certain gifts and capabilities and behaviors and creative expression abilities that when expressed, when allowed to express, provide great service to others, uplift us, brings us a higher sense of joy and fulfillment. And these gifts and these abilities, which I call them gifts because as we go through this discussion, higher self is something we receive from above. It is a concept that may seem very esoteric, but when we reflect back on our life, we'll realize that every one of us have had indications of this higher self communicating with us. And when we understand it, we realize that there is this true identity or true self-image that exists somewhere in the mind and we can access it. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you realize that I'm a huge fan of working with the subconscious mind. In other words, we have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. We also have something called the superconscious mind where the higher self is stored. And the higher self has this identity that we can choose to identify with, in other words, impress on the subconscious mind and express certain values and beliefs that create reality. In my previous video, I talked about how beliefs create reality. In other words, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. Our goal in life is to identify our beliefs, limiting beliefs, and evolve them to more empowering beliefs. As we continue on this journey, we ask ourselves, what do we really believe? What is our true beliefs? We might learn beliefs from other individuals, but then we realize that we can evolve the beliefs within and uncover our own beliefs. And where do these beliefs come from? Well, these beliefs come from the superconscious mind, and they are the beliefs of your higher self. You can evolve your beliefs and identify your higher self, which is part of the journey, which we're going to discuss in detail. Or we can look at just about anything that happens in the external world and realize that it's a reflection of what's going on within. And since as we believe it's brought on to us, we can ask ourselves then upon reflection upon anything in the outer world, what do we believe to be true about this from a place of empowerment or disempowerment in the spirit of harmony, benefit for us, others, and divine or evolution? 
If there's any limitation about that, then we can go in and ask ourselves, what is a better belief that we can have? And if you find that better belief, a more evolved belief, then you are communicating with your higher self. Now, this is a journey. So as you evolve your belief, as you create more success, as you bring forth your desires, you will also identify higher level beliefs. You'll eventually get to a place where you find this higher self and it is so vivid and clear to you and unique to you that you'll be able to reflect back upon various stages of your life and realize that there was always these revelations available for you to receive this higher self identity and have it impressed in the subconscious mind via your imagination, assume it to be you, and have it materialize in the external world as your own version of heaven on earth. Now, this higher self, as mentioned, reveals itself all throughout life. So thus, this is the journey of life, and we enjoy this journey. And when we reflect upon this level of understanding, we understand why the different people, environment, circumstance, and information exists in our life. It is there to help us understand our higher self and live our higher self. Everything is contributing, as I always say this, to your definite chief aim. Now, let's go into a little detail about this. If what we're saying here is that the identity exists, which is your higher self, and if you find this higher self and impress it on the subconscious mind, you will live reality from this perspective. Now, I'll speak from personal experience and talking to many clients about this. Those that identify their higher self and begin to honor and live their higher self find the right values and beliefs that are right from them, develop and encourage the capabilities that they were already good at to cultivate and share with others as service or to enrich in or better their lives because there are some capabilities that you have where you can just enjoy. And it's not necessarily directly about service, but indirectly it is because when you bring happiness into this world by focusing on what you care about, you also inspire others to do the same. In other words, awaken and understand their own higher self. And behaviors also begin to flow and environments change. In a previous video, I talked about this concept called unwavering focus. And the idea is that in earlier stages, we force ourselves mentally and emotionally to get ourselves to do things. But what we're talking about here is when you're aligned with the higher self, when you identify the higher self, and this is a journey, more and more so you will identify the higher self, you'll find that you won't need to force yourself to do the optimal behaviors. You will be aligned with what you need to do on a daily basis to create what you desire while enjoying the flow and being in a place where the journey and the destination are one. And through this process, you'll be doing what you are meant to do, what your higher self is asking you to do. And it's really who you are, and then you identify with, and then you are expressing. You will begin at this point to understand your desires better. Maybe in earlier stages, we misunderstand our desires. Many of us might even think that desires are a problem. It's not the desires, but the way the desires are interpreted in the subconscious mind and allowed to express through our behaviors, our actions, our thoughts, and our emotions. Now, we, really, we live in four realms of existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. When one is aligned with their higher self, they physically choose the certain behaviors. They physically accept themselves. They physically behave in a way that's aligned with their true self, their higher self, and it may not be what other people are doing. The same is to be said about emotions. They honor their emotions, they express their emotions, and they do it because it's who they are. The same with thoughts. Thoughts are received in the mind when one is connected to their higher self through the journey. And then these thoughts materialize and express themselves in the outer world as circumstance. And these thoughts come from the higher self, so they're unique thoughts. And when shared with others, this can lead to innovation. Innovation is a net result of thinking. And thinking is a net result of what is in our subconscious mind, which is either a self-image from the past or a combination of that and the higher self, or one of predominant being in the higher self. When aligned with the higher self, unique thoughts are identified and impressed on the subconscious mind via the imagination. That's what Neville talks about. And as a result, reality is created based on how you want it to see, which is in the spirit of harmony, benefit for you, benefit for others, and benefit for divine. 
the higher self is about spirit of harmony. It's the statement, the kingdom of heaven is within. The higher self represents harmony for you, others, and divine. In other words, abundance for you and all that you are interacting with within your awareness. And this continues as a revelation of higher self as well as a stimulus for others who cross your path to find their own higher self. So Neville Goddard puts this really well. He says, Now we'll go back to the second of Genesis. And it is said, And God placed man in the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. Now when you read the story, you think it happened thousands of years ago. I've come to tell you that it is now. You are in the Garden of Eden and you think you are shut out or banished. You are in it and the garden is your mind. But you need, like every gardener, you need pruning shears. So what Neville is saying is that our mind is our home. That is where our home is. That's the Garden of Eden. And to respect the mind as the Garden of Eden is to keep it clear of disempowering thoughts and taking inventory of the various people, environment, circumstance, and information in your environment, realizing that, that it's a manifestation based on most likely past information that you have consumed which has formed your self-image, and you can change this and bring it to a higher self-image, which is your higher self, and as a result of it, you will experience your mind as a sacred temple. Your mind is sacred. It is the house of God, and it externalizes itself in the people, environment, circumstance, and information in the outer world. The outer world's a reflection of the inner world. Now, when a mind is clouded by disbelief, limiting programming, and negative thought processes towards self, others, and life in general, it is hard for a person to believe that the mind can create reality with such precision. Now, when he's talking about pruning shears, this means that we have the ability then to go into our mind and we can start today to clip away the unnecessary thoughts by asking the higher self, what is a better way of looking at this perspective that I have in my life towards a circumstance, knowing that the perspective represents the belief and the belief creates the reality? See, what we're working with here is the power of the mind. We're not trying to go into the outer world and change the circumstance. We're changing everything within. And as a result of changing the thought processes, and how we look at reality from the mind, the external world changes in ways that interact with the invisible forces. Now, many of us think that the world of five sensory data is all that exists. And then we've had many mystical experiences in our life, and watched a video I did on infinite intelligence, where we have been able to bring forth what we desire in ways we never even thought possible. If you connect the dots looking backward, you'll see some clues of some commonalities of your thought processes and behaviors and different things you are doing to stimulate that infinite intelligence to be brought forth. It is then important to take inventory and journal when you are tapping into infinite intelligence and recognize the various things that you are doing to stimulate this infinite intelligence that exists within you to bring forth your results in ways you never thought possible. And this is what we're talking about when we say invisible forces. Most likely, it's going to be a net result of picking a goal or a definite chief aim and committing to yourself and developing the faith to bring it forth through the bridge of incidences, through evolving values and beliefs, certain capabilities and behaviors, and environmental changes, your desire is brought forth. Now, we can look back at the logical pieces, and it's also important to reflect back on the more esoteric pieces, the pieces that did not make any sense, but upon reflection will make sense to you. These pieces may not make sense to anyone else, but they'll make sense to you, and this is an indication of your higher self communicating with you. See, your higher self has a unique language and a unique way of communicating that is distinct to you. Some might communicate to the higher self via the imagination, or some might do it in internal vocal conversations, or some might experience it in outer world synchronicities, or a combination of all of them. It's important to understand what is the way your higher self communicates to you. So life becomes a very exciting puzzle then, because before 
It looked like a series of random events, and you were very much at the effect of the world. But as a result of maintaining this garden of the mind, you go back into the cause-based reality. In other words, you realize that the outer world is a reflection of the inner world. You are then said to express the light from within, which is your higher self expressing. Another way to look at this is in earlier stages of creating success, and the reason why I put Orison Martin in here is he's actually the founder of Success Magazine, which has played a huge role in cultivating people to a level of understanding of developing the higher self. See, success is a very important thing to create what you want and bring forth what you desire for your happiness, joy, yourself, others, people that you care about, which will lead you to the meaning of life, and that is to find your higher self version of success and bring that forth. So it is a destination to bring forth your higher self and live it in this existence, and that destination is realized through bringing forth your other goals and desires and other successes that you want to bring forth. This is why when a person gets to a certain level of success, they tend to focus more on finding what is authentic and right for them. Once you're able to create a certain amount of wealth or money or a certain level of fitness or a certain amount of success in whatever area of your choice, you realize that there's something more to this equation. And then you start to say, I want to now, because I have the ability to create success, create the success based on how I really want to create it, based on my heart's desires, based on what I believe is right for me. And this right here also furthers the conversation between the higher self and you, which is the current self. And this happens again through a conversation that's right for you. So Neville says, but you have a mission. You have a purpose. It is not to amass a fortune. You can do it if you want to. It's not to be famous. Again, you could do it if you want to. It's not to be some mighty power, but simply to tend to the garden of God. That is your purpose. You are placed in the garden to dress it and keep it, that only the lovely things grow in the garden of God. If you keep your mind clear of the elements that deny what you desire, which are thoughts and beliefs that you may have assumed to be true from others, and if you assume it to be true, then it will be identified and externalized in the world that you see, and then you might assume it to be fact, there will always be an alternative viewpoint that proves the equation otherwise. It may be a placebo effect. This placebo is important. Because if we study the cause and effect, we can relate it back to a certain thought and belief system that made it so. Studying the power of the mind is probably one of the most important things that I've ever done because I realized that when I came across the Kabbalion, all is mind, the universe is mental. Now, if all is mind and the universe is mental, then all effect in the outer world is a net result of what's in our mind. And we have assumed that the outer world is happening to us, but when we reflect upon what is being discussed here and reflect upon our own experiences in life and when we created what we desire, allowed ourselves to express, and created things, circumstances, materializations through ways that go beyond the current accepted body of knowledge way of going about doing things, we maybe reflect upon that and say, there's probably something else going on. Well, the purpose is to tend to the Garden of Eden, which is your mind. Now, when you tend to the Garden of Eden, you'll start to see things that you didn't see before. You'll start to have realizations that you've never had before. These things that you see, the realizations that you have, will be from your higher self, revealing to you about your true self. It is around these times where you will start to understand your desires. And you'll also realize that one of the biggest issues we had in the Garden of Eden was identifying with shame. Shame distorts reality. It causes us to have a distorted view of our desires. A pure understanding of desires is the reflection that your desires are pure and that they're either interpreted or misinterpreted by the subconscious mind based on higher self-programming or programming to be assumed to be self, but it's really a current self that was learned from five sensory data and meaning, and you can change that programming. Now, through this process, you'll start to understand who you are. 
And pragmatically speaking, this will translate into you finding your purpose and mission in life that you want to live and fulfill, whether it's entrepreneurship or whatever it is. You will also uncover your true desires, and you will also uncover the way that is unique to you, either through five sensory methodologies or a combination of five sensory methodologies and six sense methodologies, which otherwise we call infinite intelligence or primarily infinite intelligence to bring forth what you desire. So that's why he recommends focusing on keeping the Garden of Eden clear. Because by doing this, you understand who you are. And this process of continuous understanding who you are reveals your higher self in your imagination. When you keep your mind clear, when you remove the doubts and indecisions and fears in your mind that don't serve you, your higher self makes its appearance and then it impresses itself on your subconscious mind. And then what you desire and what you create is harmonious. It's what I call the lovers within, the relationship between the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the superconscious mind. So to simplify this, because we are in various stages of our journey, some of us might have really identified our higher self and are living it fully. Some of us are you know, about halfway there. Some of us are in the early stages. No matter what level you are at, you can always gain a deeper understanding and build a deeper relationship with your higher self, knowing that your higher self is going to reveal to you what you truly desire and the ways to bring forth what you desire. It's all within. Now, you'll, as you go through life, have different teachers and experiences and information appear in the outer world but a deep realization is that this is all a reflection of the inner world. So that'll be your stories on how you connect to your higher self, via your inner world. Now, a simple way of going about doing this is what James Allen said in As a Man Thinketh. He says, those who are not prepared for the apprehension of a great purpose, in other words, have not identified their main purpose in life via the higher self, and understand how everything was related to it and contributing to it, should fix the thoughts upon the faultless performance of their duty, no matter how insignificant their tasks may appear. Only in this way can the thoughts be gathered and focused and resolution and energy be developed, which being done, there is nothing which may not be accomplished. Take an inventory of all the things that you have to do, even if you don't consider it to be contributing towards some big purpose, things you have to do, and make a commitment to complete those things. See them all the way till completion. If not, don't do them. Release them from your responsibilities. But whatever you do, see it all the way till completion, because it's not just about completing those tasks, but what happens along the journey. Along the journey, you develop power of mind. Power of mind is your ability to focus on something all the way till it's brought forth. Now, not from a place of force. Subconsciously focus on it, as well as keep yourself in the understanding of the Garden of Eden being your mind and that your responsibility then is to prune the thoughts that show up that no longer serve you, the values and beliefs that you have, we can reflect back to the Robert Diltz model, that are inharmonious to what you desire to create one by one. And that's what we talk about when we're saying focus. It is not a force-based focus, it's a flow-based focus. It's a desired state to be in, to realize that you're going to bring forth what you desire and release in the journey the various values and beliefs that no longer serve you. Evolve the thoughts within by connecting to your higher self and asking yourself, what is a better way of looking at this circumstance? What, a, what is a better way of looking at this interaction that I'm having with another person, knowing that the higher self will give you the higher level thought, which will then become the identity that has been impressed on the subconscious mind through past. It'll overwrite that. And that identity will now become your higher self identity. And as a result, the capabilities, behaviors, and environments will change. You'll be working with five sensory data, 
as well as six cents, infinite intelligence to bring forth what you desire. That is one of the major benefits of sticking with something all the way till completion. It's focusing your thoughts. Wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. Reality is created based on your attention. Wherever your attention is, that's where reality exists for you. To keep your attention on what is harmonious from a place of unconditional love and unwavering focus is to not use force, but rather subconscious faith that what you desire will be brought forth. And you'll get better at this the more you align with your higher self. You seek counsel and guidance within. And as mentioned, your higher self will communicate in a way that's right for you, distinct to you. And also, during the process, it's important to then realize that all the power is in your mind. That is your Garden of Eden. And your goal, as you bring forth what you desire, is to keep your mind clear of any limiting beliefs, doubts, anger, hatred, envy, or beliefs that you identify about yourself and others and reality that prevent you from connecting with your higher self and valuing your Garden of Eden, making it more difficult to bring forth what you desire as a result of the manifestation of fears, doubts, and indecision. Orison Martin says, The youth who starts out by being afraid to speak what he thinks will usually end up being afraid to think what he wishes. Now, what we have in our life, in our journey, in earlier stages, is many indicators of our higher self shining through. And based on different experiences, usually based on shame, we prevent ourselves from allowing the higher self to express. And when the higher self expresses, it is received well. And when it's received, that reception is impressed in the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind does it again and again and again. And it is received then as encouragement. If we don't get it at earlier stages, we might be afraid. And when we communicate, when we are afraid, it is received at the outer world as the reciprocal of that fear, rejection, or some kind of denial or shame by people, environment, circumstance, or information. See, it's thought in the mind that created it, and it was infused in earlier stages because we are very open subconsciously. But one of the things we always have to remember is that the higher self is our true self, and we're always looking to become the higher self at the identity level in our subconscious mind or self-image level at the subconscious mind and have that expressed because that contains our true desires and the way to bring forth our true desires. So being afraid to speak means being afraid to express. And right now, we have to let go of our past and forgive ourselves and others in our past that may have appeared to prevent us to speak. All that exists is the now, and we can commit to expressing ourselves. More and more so each day, we'll find ourselves expressing more and more. And as a result of the expression, we will also allow the desires to flow through us, be interpreted from the perspective of the self-image that is more so in alignment with the higher self. Because when in alignment with the higher self, you express purely, and it is received well. The expression, a lot of times, is contributing to the lives of others. It may be an expression that you enjoy by yourself, and as you express to others, they also receive it and value it. You create value for others, and you also allow them to pick up the essence of what you represent and begin to connect with their own higher self so that they can express accordingly. Wanted is a man who is dominated by a mighty purpose will not permit one great faculty to dwarf, cripple, warp, or mutilate himself, or will not allow the overdevelopment of one faculty to stunt or paralyze his other faculties. In order to understand the higher self and live through the higher self, we have to remember the four realms of existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And we have to make a commitment to ourselves to bring it into alignment. 
In other words, the self-image or the higher self assumes itself as the physical higher self. It also assumes itself as the emotional higher self and expresses accordingly. It assumes itself as the mental higher self in the thought processes and expresses accordingly. And always remember that this is a journey. This is a constant journey. But upon reflection of what we experience in the outer world, we can make the change within. So a mind dominated by purpose, and if we go back to what Neville said, if you don't know what your major purpose is as far as how we define it as your service, if you're an entrepreneur, what you do and your contributions in the entrepreneurial space, then what you can do is say, my purpose then is to tend to the mind, the Garden of Eden. That's what I commit to, knowing that by committing to that, you will find what you truly desire to bring forth and the way to be brought forth. And it may present itself in a small project in which all you have to do is bring it forth into completion. And through bringing forth into completion, you release the values and beliefs that are inharmonious to that, disempowering to that process of bringing it forth. And through the evolution of that, you release more elements of values and beliefs that are not in alignment with the higher self and evolve the self-image within to be in alignment with the higher self. He says the indomitable will, the inflexible purpose, will find a way or make one. There's always room for a man of force. And by force, he's not talking about physical force or emotional force. He's talking about real power. Indomitable will and inflexible purpose means that you are on course and things cannot sway you off course because that's all you know that exists in reality, your purpose. All people, information, environment, and circumstance is interpreted as contributing to that purpose and you don't see the conflict. You see the connection, the collaboration, and room for evolution, yes, but you do not see the conflict. You transmute the obstacle into something that propels you higher. That's what is meant by inflexible. It's not rigidity. It is not from a place of forcing others. It is from a place of externalizing as the reflection of harmonious people environment, circumstance, and the harmonious collaboration of others by evolving your thoughts within. Because what comes from the programming via your higher self is to work with the higher powers of the mind, the thought forces that externalize in reality, and sometimes it involves behaviors, and sometimes it involves reality changing in ways beyond your current level of understanding. But it does happen. It expresses itself, it externalizes, and at some point you'll be able to reflect upon how so. We can look at reality and say, this is how to create success. This is how to bring forth our results based on other people's thinking. And there's nothing wrong with that. It can be very helpful to get you going and moving forward. And we can also realize that that's just one way of the infinite ways that success was brought forth based on the circumstances and maybe some general circumstances that exist predominantly with you and others. In other words, you can find your own way. And yes, you could follow someone else's way and bring forth results. But what we're talking about here is realizing that the higher self has the most distinct way, the unique way from a place of joy, bliss, and ease, real power rather than the use of force. And one of the thoughts is, well, why can't I have that right now? Well, we are on the journey of realizing and accepting our higher self. And the way we do this is to observe our energy and our navigating of reality and see where we're tensing up, where we look at the outer world as holding us back, where we've created values and beliefs that says we are at the whim and at the effect of the outer world rather than being at the cause in the inner world. To look at reality from more of a place of joy, bliss, and ease, and kingdom of heaven within, between yourself, others, and divine and evolution. If there's inconsistencies there, then we can evolve that by changing the programming within. And the programming within, as mentioned, can be received via the higher self by asking what's a better way of looking at it. It's a very simple question. But the response that we get from within is valid to us, important to us, 
And as long as we respect that higher level thought and identify with that higher level thought, then the outer world externalizes accordingly. Our behaviors change. Where our attention goes changes, and real reality begins to externalize as a result of the thought process change within, which is now become more in alignment with the higher self. Success is also a great physical as well as mental tonic. It tends to strengthen the willpower. And again, willpower is externalized power not forced-based power, okay? power within, assumed to be who you are, and externalized in the bridge of incidents, not from a place of force. Now, if there's getting yourself to do things involved, there's nothing wrong with that. In the earlier stages of my journey, as mentioned, I used to force myself to do a lot of things to produce results. This taught me also how to stay focused on what is important, keeping my mind clear by keeping my mind on what is relevant, the information that was then presented infused itself in my subconscious mind and continued to externalize. And as it externalized in harmonious environment, I found myself using less and less willpower. It became more automatic. In other words, success then, what he's referring to, creates a pathway for automatic externalization in which others might look at you and say, you have a lot of willpower. But what has really happened is you have aligned more with your higher self and the capabilities, behaviors, and environments are natural to you. So there isn't any force being utilized. And your attention remains on what is harmonious to whatever goal you have next. And at this point, you are ready to receive your grand purpose, higher purposes that could not be received until one had cultivated the inner mental power through the day-to-day through everything showing up within your existence and valuing it and using it as something to evolve thinking within and change the direction of your thoughts to be more harmonious to bringing that forth or being focused on it by changing the thoughts within and through this process over and over again, which is also another way of keeping the Garden of Eden clear, along with the pruning shears of revision, which we'll talk about in a moment, is the way to develop automatic willpower or so it'll assume to be willpower, but it's really a automatic expression. It is desire received via the higher self, impressed on the subconscious mind, and expressed as the materialization of it. Manly P. Hall says, To live in the world without becoming aware of the meaning of the world is like wandering about in a great library without touching the books. When we follow the process of what's being discussed here, and you go through the journey of further realizing your higher self and identifying your true desires based on your higher self, expressing yourself and living reality the way you really want to based on your higher self, everything in life will begin to have way more meaning. You'll realize the meaning was always there. It's just you didn't know how it had meaning. Your consciousness is actually going up. Consciousness and awareness increase is the goal, and when we are moving to a higher degree of consciousness and awareness, we begin to make more sense of reality and see the cause-effect relationship of people, environment, and circumstance and information to the thoughts within. In earlier stages, we might think that it's the other person doing things or things are outside of our control. And then as we start to evolve in the journey, we see ourselves as the cause of reality. We see how we were the cause of it, and we can change it within. And we don't shame ourselves, we accept ourselves, and we evolve our programming within to have it express accordingly. And everything becomes meaningful. Everything becomes synchronistic. We're able to find meaning where others can't find meaning, and that's okay, because as we continue to honor that meaning, we also continue to honor our higher self. And by honoring our higher self, which, by the way, the higher self speaks through looking at the outer world and revealing to you meaning that is distinct to you. And when you trust that meaning and listen to your own inner voice meaning, you are also identifying with your your self-image is becoming one more in alignment with your higher self. Every soul is engaged in a great work, the labor of personal liberation from the state of ignorance. The world is a great prison. Its bars are the unknown. 
Hey, remember that. The world is a great prison. Its bars are the unknown. When the unknown becomes known and you understand it, and your understanding may go beyond what others around you understand, you will find yourself free and understanding and wiser in the workings of your soul, your higher self, and your relationship with the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, the superconscious mind, and creating and living reality based on what you desire, which is bringing forth your own version of heaven and earth. And it said, and each is a prisoner until at last he earns the right to tear these bars from their moldering sockets and pass illuminated and inspired into the darkness which becomes lighted by that presence. This journey that we're on, in which we experience challenge, frustration, is blessing us to reveal within ourselves the source of that so we can change it within to realize that we have the power within. When you work with the power of mind and change the perspective through belief, and I'm talking real belief within, and have that in your subconscious mind, assume it to be so, what appeared to hold you back, externalized, turns into a reality that is harmonious to what you call your own version of freedom, happiness. Many of us might look at hardship and then look at that negative outcome or potentiality. Bob Proctor calls this the terror barrier, preventing us from going through the terror barrier and bouncing back to an old paradigm that is part of a lower self that is not in alignment with the higher self. Now, the repetition of doing this keeps us in a state of ignorance and keeps the invisible bars externalized as the physical bars, keeps the invisible bars that hold us back externalized as people, environment, circumstance, and information that holds us back. So the power is then within, and the power is received via the higher self. And as the higher self is identified, and we receive the values and beliefs that are right for us via the higher self, the self-image changes, the subconscious self-image changes, and the subconscious mind is connected to the subconscious mind of all people connected to the superconscious mind, and it externalizes in a way that is the most harmonious because that's working with the power of infinite intelligence. Every man's true teacher is his own higher self. Your truest teacher is your higher self. You can talk to your higher self. You can build a relationship with your higher self. When I refer to in my videos becoming your own best friend, what I'm really referring to is becoming your own best friend to your higher self who's always available, who's always been there, and has always been ready to give us the advice and wisdom. The best advice and wisdom, ask yourself, you know the advice and wisdom that you should take. The question is, do you take it? If we don't take the advice, it's because we doubt the advice. If we believe the advice and we trust the advice, we'll automatically take the advice. The behaviors will change. Again, this is a journey, so we realize this more and more along the journey. So every, great, every man's true teacher is his own higher self, and when the life is brought under the control of reason, this higher self is released from bondage to appetites and impulses and becomes priest or priestess, sage, and illuminator. Every man has his own world. In your mind, you have a whole world. It's your world. And this higher self wants to live in this world that is your own world, externalized, okay, reflected in the outer world. He dwells in the midst of his little universe as the Lord and ruler that constitutes parts of himself. Sometimes he is a wise king, devoting his life to the needs of the subjects. But more often he's a tyrant, imposing many forms of injustice upon his vassals, either through ignorance of their needs or through thoughtlessness concerning the ultimate disaster that he brings upon himself. By imprisoning others and holding others back through limitation, because we believe that that's the way to do it, we release ourselves from receiving the wisdom of a higher self. 
we fall into the effect world. We get lost in the outer world. The world is within you. Every man has his own world. And all power is within. And the inner world, which received through conversation with the higher self, is the world that allows you to express accordingly when it's impressed in the subconscious mind with faith that this world is yours and externalize, and it will be in harmonious relationships with people, environment, and circumstance. Now, when I reflect back upon my own experience, I look at it as entrepreneurial, the journey of entrepreneurship. In earlier stages, a lot of force. Nowadays, the deals have to be win, 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 or no deal. Benefit for me, benefit for others, benefit for divine or evolution. There does not need to be any force. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Because if I do it, I am preventing my own connection with my higher self, and I'm breaking that connection. And when times get hard, I'm going to look for, to the external world for answers, failing to realize that I can get the answer from the inner world, and I have to then go back and reestablish that connection with the higher self. Years are spent by the masters testing the hearts of candidates. Those who begin spiritual unfoldment find difficulties of all kinds rising before them. The even tenor of human existence is shattered. Temptations of all kinds confront the seeker, and it is only when he rises triumphant above all of them that he is usable in the great plan of human progress. In a man of a little mind, selfishness is a small sin that should man develop a great mind and control the destinies of thousands, the small sin, if left unmastered, becomes a great menace. Higher self has higher responsibilities, higher purposes, which gives even more meaning to life, which is uncovered through the journey of bringing forth what you desire, is found in the journey of keeping your mind clear so that you can receive the blessings from within. And also, whatever, as James Allen put it, faultless performance on whatever task that presents itself to you, seeing it all the way till completion. And I'll say the quote again. He says, those who are not prepared for the apprehension of a great purpose and preparation is the journey. Okay, everything we're talking about here, this is the preparation. Honoring the higher self, expressing the higher self, releasing the limiting programming that is not in alignment with the higher self to bring forth what you desire and repeat the process again and again and again. That's when you are ready for the higher purpose, a greater purpose. And he says, until you are ready for that purpose, and many are looking for this high purpose, but are not valuing the tasks and the various projects that they have right now and seeing them into completion, and thus they are delaying the receiving of their own higher purpose. He said, should fix the thoughts upon the faultless performance of their duty, no matter how insignificant their tasks may appear. Only in this way can thoughts be gathered and focused and resolution and energy be developed, which being done, there is nothing which may not be accomplished. So let's get a little deeper into receiving your higher self because nobody can give it to you. It's received from within. Reflecting upon what James Allen said in As Men Think It, he says a man should conceive of a legitimate purpose in his heart and set out to accomplish it. So ask yourself, what's your purpose in your heart right now? It doesn't have to be grand. It's something that you receive from your heart, knowing that when it's received from your heart, it is actually your higher self giving it to you so you can bring it forth and also develop and grow in the process. He says he should make this purpose the centralizing point of his thoughts. It may take the form of a spiritual ideal or it may be a worldly object according to his nature at the time being. Whichever it is, he should steadily focus his thought forces upon the object which he has set before him. Okay, thought forces. It doesn't say go and change the outer world. It says steadily focus your own thought forces. Evolve yourself within. Keep your attention on completing it, seeing it all the way to completion. And if you find yourself being distracted, ask the questions why to your higher self, and the answers will be revealed to you. He should make this purpose his supreme duty and should devote himself to its attainment, not allowing his thoughts to wander away into ephemeral fancies, longings, and imaginings. This is the royal road to self-control and true concentration of thought. Even if he fails again and again to accomplish his purpose, as he necessarily must until weakness is overcome, 
the strength of his character gained will be the measure of his true success. And this will form a new starting point for future power and triumph. In order to command the powers of the mind, the invisible powers of thought, you must train yourself to concentrate on one thing at a time till completion, evolving yourself within, maintaining flow, and a state of faith all the way through till completion. If you fail and you fall again and again and again, get back up and do it again and again and again. It is through this process where you will tap into the powers of infinite intelligence. Now, I learned this through Thinking Grow Rich. He said, in order to tap into the sixth sense, work more with the creative imagination and also work with the powers of infinite intelligence and align with infinite intelligence, you have to follow all the other principles in the book and see your project all the way till completion. And it wasn't about the doing of the stuff. I realized this afterwards. It is who you became as a result of concentrating your thoughts and releasing from your subconscious inharmonious programming. That was the greatest benefit of following the principles in the earlier stages of the book because then you begin to work with the powers of your mind. And then as a result of working with the powers of mind, and I'll speak from experience, I've had many stories. Whenever I put something on my goals list, I'm able to bring it forth in ways that I never could have possibly conceived to bring it forth, but I always bring them forth. Because I have, through the journey, tapped into using the powers of my mind through concentration. When I set a goal, I have firm faith and conviction, not from a place of force, but from a place of understanding that I will bring it forth. And that right there, that firm conviction of faith, calm faith, is how the thought forces get access. One of the statements that I had learned from Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy is that the subconscious mind does not do well with coercion. It does not like to be forced. And the reason why is the subconscious mind is your ally. You can't force the subconscious mind because if you force the subconscious mind, it will be expressed as force. You will see it externalized in the world. The subconscious mind works through conversation and understanding and through nuance. And the way to develop this is to concentrate your mind and no matter what setback shows up, to let go, study the works of David Hawkins, letting go, release from it mentally and emotionally and allow your mind to go back on the next thing that you need to do or the thought processes that need to be evolved within to bring forth what you desire or just go about doing whatever else you have to do with faith. And I'm talking subconscious faith. And to have it to this high degree, it is really a net result of repeating the process again and again and again. And then also, throughout this journey, we want to apply what Neville taught us in the pruning shears of revision. He says, at the end of the day, I review my day. I don't judge it. I simply review it. I look over the entire day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. And then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene, rewrite it, revise it. And having revised my day, then in my imagination, I will live that day, the revised day. And I do it over and over in my imagination until the seeming imagined state begins to take on, to me, the tones of reality. It seems that it's real. And I actually did experience it. And I have found from experience that these revised days, if really live, will change my tomorrows. So we go through our process of doing what we have to do to produce our results based on any purpose that we choose. As a result of sticking all the way till completion, we develop the mental forces. We also are able to tap into our higher self to get our evolved thought processes and values and beliefs within, change it, identify it within, till the other elements of the Robert Diltz model here, the capabilities, behaviors, and environments flow accordingly. And in the process, we build a greater relationship with our higher self. We begin to trust ourselves and appreciate our higher selves even more. We also begin to communicate via our subconscious mind from a place of understanding and nuance with our higher self. And to contribute to this and to continue building this relationship, 
we release any kind of stories or experiences that we've had throughout the day and rewrite them using the pruning shears of revision exercise at the end of night prior to state akin to sleep and imagine those desired outcomes in a state akin to sleep. And through this process, we're doing exactly what James Allen said. We're developing the powers of the mind, the ability to direct our thoughts towards the outcome, not from a place of force, but from a place of unwavering focus, which is done from a place of bliss and ease, working with the higher powers of the mind, as discussed in Letting Go and Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. And through this process, we build a greater relationship and understand our higher self. Higher self becomes our current self by evolving the current self within, by imagining the higher self and having the higher self impress on the subconscious mind. And when we reflect on our journey, we always had revelations of our higher self. It is our desires. It is our aspirations. The question is, do we allow those desires and aspirations to express or do we deny or repress them? If we deny and repress them, then we break our connection with our higher self. When we understand, accept, and express who we really are, who we know in our heart who we really are, in other words, it's not a result of what other people tell us, but really what we know, we build a further d deeper relationship with this higher self and the higher self expresses through us automatically. And when you live through your higher self, you are on purpose, you do your purpose, your days are in flow, you enjoy what you do, you are good at what you do because it's inherently who you were destined to be. You are in service, you're bringing forth your desires and you understand the deeper powers of the mind and you realize how purposeful everything was in your life to contribute to these realizations bringing you into a deeper connection with your higher self. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.